Well, uh, I was 32 years old and found myself in a little bit of a predicament. I was coming off of 15 years in the nonprofit community development space and wanting to transition to a career in writing code for profit. And the, uh, the, the, one of the challenges there was that the average employer did not share my optimism about how my previous uh, work experience would prepare me to provide great value uh, on their team. And so it, I probably could have easily walked into, you know, done the average amount of effort, applied five places, and, and see, take an absolute entry-level position somewhere, and gotten a job writing code. But I happen to have a wife and three kids, and one of them have some medical, uh, uh, specialized medical issues, so I needed to, you know, I, I couldn't start at the very bottom of the ladder. And so needing to uh, come up with uh, better than average results, I had to put in a better than average effort, and I ended up applying at 107 jobs. I have the spreadsheet to prove it. And uh, I want to share with you a little bit of the, the things I, I learned in that process. <laughs> Um, I, I widened my net to remote jobs, so I'll share a little bit also about remote jobs. Uh, here's the overview of what I'll share. The strategy I followed, uh, what, you what you should look out for, who I think remote work is ideal for and who I don't think it's ideal for, uh, some of the pros and cons of remote work and misconceptions of remote work. So I'll, I'll touch quite a bit on remote work, but tell the story and, and how it ends. Also, I've given this talk once before, but it has a different ending now, so it's, it's a new talk now. Um, so, yeah, this, this is uh, uh, the beginning of this journey, uh, where, I, where I picked the story up. Uh, when it's time to go hunt for the job, uh, my wife told me, well, Devet, it's a numbers game. You're going to have X amount of employers say no to you for every one that says yes. So if you just apply at enough of them and apply at a lot of them, you will get enough yeses and then, you know, get a job that you, that you want. And I told her, no, 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 it, it doesn't work like that. Uh, this is the tech industry. It works differently. Uh, if I just have the right tools on my resume that I've learned, so there, there's all these hot JavaScript frameworks. If I can just figure out which one to learn and put on my resume, that is going to help me get a job. And so I... I opened up the books and started studying and thank goodness my mentor got hold of me and uh, he, his name's Rob Foreman and he's like, Devet, what are you doing? It's a numbers game. Uh, you're supposed to apply at uh, X many places, apply at a lot of places uh, and uh, you know, the exact same, she would like me to make clear that it is the exact same thing she said and I should have listened to her in the first place. Um, but it, the quote he said stuck with me. He says, you can't code your way out of a sales problem. And I don't know if it's cool to use DevOps as a verb, but uh, you can't DevOps your way out of a sales problem. And uh, if you're in this room, you probably identify with me where you've got a track record with computers and you've got a good track record with computers. That if I know that if I sit down with a computer for long enough and focus on a problem and don't give up, eventually I can make the computer do what I want it to do. And so in wanting a really great job, I figured, OK, that I know that I, as a person, can follow these steps and get there. But finding a job is not an engineering problem. It is a sales problem. You are trying to sell all of your hours to one buyer uh, to buy them from you on a permanent basis. And it, it, the same can apply for uh, getting contract work or different kinds of jobs. Um, but yeah, and, and if you're at a place in your career, maybe a bit later in your career, where finding a job with several years of experience becomes really easy for you, still I think there's a challenge for you to look at the act of sales, not as a sleazy thing that people try to convince, uh, manipulate others to do things that's only good for them, but it is a transfer of idea, and whether it is you're trying to get your organization to adopt better DevOps practices, you're trying to convince that person that you should be using Docker and containerizing things, or using Kubernetes, or continuous integration, or testing. Um, if you're trying to convince somebody of that, just putting your head down and spending a couple weekends and building the best demo um, could be valuable, but I would, 
I would appeal to you that you need to look at the fact that you're dealing with a sales problem, that you need to transfer this idea to somebody and think, um, think of their perspective and uh, think of their needs and try, com try to communicate to that. Um, so yeah, I, I had to accept this. Uh, acknowledge the competition. Uh, so this is, uh, yeah, again, this gets vastly different with how many years of experience you have and, and what you've been doing. But especially in remote work, you are competing with everybody in the world that is qualified to do this job to do it. So you're going to have to try hard because there's many people competing with you. And the same with within Cape Town or within the city you're living in. If there is a company that he either has excellent work, work culture, the managers you know, treat their employees with respect, um, or excellent compensation, or excellent you know, benefits or something, there's going to be more competition for those jobs. So you might have to work a bit harder to get to those. Um, write down what you're looking for. So there's a lot of, it, it is an emotional thing. You might like to think you're purely analytical and just will look at the facts, but it is an emotional thing to think of, okay, do I want to spend most of my life, uh, waking life with this group of people working on something? Um, and so on, so emotions can sway you this way or that. So write down what you're looking for. Write down what compensation, what is important to you. And uh, so that when the time comes to decide, okay, am I taking this job, am I not, that you've got something to look back on. Well, does it, does it match what I'm looking for? Uh, presentation matters. Again, we've, we've all met the, the guy who, who would say, no, I've, I've never applied for a job. Um, I, uh, jobs come to me. Well, sure, th that could work for you. Um, I, I'm of the opinion you could, you could do better if you focus on not purely just on your skills, which is very important. And uh, you have to always keep learning and be able to deliver good value but also presenting it in a way that somebody can understand what it is you're offering. So I uh, got somebody, uh, paid somebody to professionally create this uh, CV for me. And uh, I actually, they, they actually are a really good graphic designer. So I had to ask them to make it just a little bit uglier than what they usually do to make it look like somebody who could code would be able to, you know, do it themselves. <laughs> um, so yeah. Went and updated LinkedIn and website and all that stuff. And it, it, it's, it's important. If, if an employer is trying to figure out who you are, that's, that's all they've got to go on. Got a professional headshot taken and got some endorsements from people I've, uh, I've worked for. So prepare for a sense of failure. This is uh, important to grow strong on the inside and uh, just accept it that you're going to be told no. And also, if you cast your net wide enough, if you pl apply at 107 places, you could even find one or two that, that turns you down in a not so nice way. Um, so prepare for that and just know that you need to get X amount of no's to get to a yes. Um, get organized, track your progress. So I made a spreadsheet. I'm not going to share it because there's personal information on it. But if you wanted my column names and wanted to chat about, OK, how did I end up doing this? Uh, I, I'd be happy to share that. Also, I happen to now work for Salesloft, which is, as luck would have it, a software specifically for this sort of thing, for tracking uh, a bunch of people you want to contact. Uh, also, if, if you happen to be working on building a product and you're hoping the sales team would sell more of it so that your work can have more impact, uh, mention to them that you've heard of sales loft. If, as soon as the sales manager figures out what it does, it's actually pretty easy to sell. It's like, well, this will help, help your salespeople sell more stuff. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll write the check. Um, what to look out for. So you don't want to, uh, it, another thing my mentor said a lot, it's a lot like dating. Uh, you don't want to come right out on the first date with, you know, all these big topics. You want to get to know each other a bit, but there's Two topics that I think you try and bring up a bit earlier is time zone and compensation. Because I, I ended up wasting a bunch of time on this where I would get into an interview cycle with a company and I like them and they like me and we get down the road and by the end uh, we figure out, well, no, they need somebody to work in their time zone all the time. Or I figure out at the end they're wanting to compensate really bargain uh, basement prices. and so. 
I try and figure that out maybe on the second interview or maybe first interview if you already had a couple emails, but I mean, you've, you, you decide. So who remote work is ideal for? I think it's ideal for parents. I get to uh, go get my daughter from uh, preschool every day and have lunch with my kids. Um, that's really great to work around that schedule. Um, also intrinsically motivated. If, if you need somebody sitting next to you to help you to not open Facebook or watch cat videos during work hours, um, you know, <laughs> uh, remote work might not be ideal because that person's not there. Um, also, if you like to travel, I've had uh, co-workers <laughs> without kids who would travel all around and, and work from different places, which that, that seemed really cool. Also, non-commuters and, and non-immigrators, if you really don't like commuting for some reason, or you want to work for a foreign company and really don't want to immigrate, remote work could work for you. Um, it's not ideal. I think it's not ideal if you're living alone. Um, yes, there is a lot of interaction with Zoom or Skype or Slack or whatever you're using, but there still is a, a certain amount of just alone time with the computer in, in a fairly quiet room sometimes. So if, if you're living alone and working remote, I'd consider a co-working space where you're at least around some other people who you, know, you can interact with during the breaks. Um, if you like to regularly go out at night, um, I'd love to regularly go out at night, but I've got three kids, so I don't. So the, the time zone thing, I, I've, my, uh, I, the company I work for is based in, in the US, so the fact that I've got a couple meetings in the evenings here and there doesn't, doesn't bother me. I can go out anyways, unless I get a babysitter. Um, and so yeah, consider the time zone requirements there if you, if you like the nightlife. And if you want to optimize 100% for learning, which is a great thing to optimize for, especially earlier in your career, but anywhere, if, if, if you want to keep up with the rapid change, learning is very important. I think the most optimal place to learn a lot is sitting in the same room as the experienced people you want to learn from. So that if you see them watching cat videos or you see them go get uh, a coffee, you can quickly stop them and ask them a question or something like that. Where remote, you have to do a bit more guesswork on when might be a good time to interrupt or use asynchronous communication where it might take them longer to get back to you. Still, I've learned a ton working remotely. Uh, it just isn't as optimized for learning as fast as possible. Um, some misconceptions about remote work. Hold on, gotta make sure I don't eat into your lunchtime. I don't think you guys would enjoy the talk as much if I start taking into your lunchtime. Um, no relationship with your coworkers. You just don't know these people. It's just you and your computer. It's not true. Both remote jobs I've had, um, there was a focus to fly uh, the team Okay, at the one place, everybody was remote. Fly the whole team together every six to nine months with the focus of spending time together. Or uh, where I work now, fly me to the office every six to nine months uh, to spend time together. This is a summit, uh, and here's a movie and discussion night with pizza. Um, the, yeah, you still get to know the people. You still, get, you still you miss them because you don't get to see them in person uh, every day. But yeah, the, you do get to know them. You're on your own time all the time? Not really. It, there's still, uh, I have a weekly one-on-one -on -one with my boss. I like to put uh, pairing time, uh, pair programming time on the calendar so that I make sure it happens with my teammates. And those things you can't just willy-nilly, you know, plan five minutes in advance. So there are some certain things that has to happen. Um, I tried one time to go camping and not take time off. Um, remember that? intrinsic motivation I told you about, that goes away when I'm camping, man. If I'm next to the river with the birds chirping in the air, I didn't want to do any work. And uh, I've tried working in the car. You, I had a uh, cornea transplant there. You see me with the eye patch. I have had meetings from the car. It's just a bad idea. The, 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 it, it didn't work that well for me. Now, it, I'll, I'll preface that with I did just, in the last couple of weeks, work from Florida, uh, but I would go to the library and uh, my wife was spending, uh, and kids were spending time with, uh, with the kids' grandparents, with my wife's parents. And they would go to the beach for the day, and I might join them at the end of the day. So there's still some nice freedom there, but I didn't try and work from the beach, because me personally wouldn't get work done on the beach. Um, 
And yeah, maybe I'm getting old, but my wrist hurts if I don't type, if I type on a flat keyboard the whole week. So I've got this ridiculous keyboard and uh, I've, I've decided I don't need three monitors. I only use about two. Um, and uh, I once heard people complain about a hissing sound during an interview and bought you know, a mic that they can hear me well. So I, I personally like to just be at my desk getting a real work done in a real way. That, the picture of the guy just traveling everywhere and working from everywhere, yeah, I, I've done some of that, but ideally at a normal place of work works best for me. Um, so the, the, the first ending to the story is, is that after the, at the end of the 107 jobs, I got a job at GitLab, and I really liked working for them, uh, especially since I no longer work for them. You know that I'm not just saying this because they're paying me, but they are a great place to work for. Um, it was a great job. I learned a ton. Uh, I would totally recommend working for them. If you want to chat about that, let me know. And then after a year of working for them, one of the 107 places called me back and said, hey, we had this position open up that could work in, in your time zone. Uh, would you come apply for it? So then I got the actual dream job that I'm really happy about and really thankful for that I have now, um, working for Sales Loft. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it wasn't a clear fairy tale ending if you put in all this work and you get the ultimate job you want immediately. Um, it, it took some time to get where I'm like, wow, I, I, I don't feel any need for any career change anytime soon. So yeah, that, that was my journey of applying at 107 places and it, it paid off for me. So oh, I had a quote to leave you with. There we go. Uh, is this by Theodore Roosevelt. It's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. So if you try hard, you're going to fail. So <laughs> go out and fail, because uh, it's, it's required. Any questions? <laughs>